I, okay, I'm, I'm gonna try to speak louder. <laughs> um, so it's my first talk. Uh, uh, you'll see me crash at some point. I'll just have to reboot then. We'll see. Um, so, make XMPP sprint again. It was. Uh, it started with um, um, an idea that uh, a few people uh, in the community, in the XMPP community, had. Um, because uh, I felt, and other people also felt, that um, we weren't enough visible, uh, that the what was done in the open community wasn't enough visible. And so um, after discussing that uh, with, um, I guess actually I, I have, yes, oh, I forgot that. <laughs> uh, I'll start here. Um, I am, um, uh, you might know by name, uh, Pep, uh, on the XMPP channels, uh, almost all of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I work at Collabra, uh, free software consultancy, and uh, I'm active in, in the XMPP community as a developer, mostly client-side development, and server operator, and I also do support in a few chat rooms for different projects. Um, yeah, what, why? So, as I was saying, um, the idea started because a few people thought uh, we weren't visible enough in the, the community, the public community, and um, there was quite a lot, lot to improve uh, on every, in every implementation or even protocol still. Um, so, we decided to gather together and, um, and organize. Uh, uh, it started the first, the first event was, for me at least, was in uh, Karlsruhe in Germany uh, at uh, GPN um, and I was there with uh, JC Brandt, the author of uh, Converse.js and Daniel, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, <laughs> uh, the author of Conversation um, and we worked on uh, OMIMO at the time, the end-to-end -end encryption mechanism um, and from there, we, we discussed with JC uh, that he had similar kind of events uh, in the Plone community, the Python Plone community, and so I wanted to organize similar events. So that's where it started. Um, in yeah, and so why uh, to well to improve the ecosystem in general, but um, also it was my first event. Uh, where I get to meet, I, I got to meet uh, XMPP people. Um, so that was that was a good opportunity to meet uh, more member of the community. Um, and in general, it, it's it's quite useful to get people who know what they're talking about. So you can also implement it in your client or server implementation. Um, and yeah, so transmission of knowledge. And for me, the best. Uh, what I get out of this is the motivation, so it's like really focused on two or three days and I can do uh, what I do in uh, six months time usually. Um, uh, yeah, so this sprint is, mo this talk is mostly about how to, how for you to organize your own sprints and how to, uh, for these events to become um, so I don't have to push you to do it then. <laughs> um, so what do you want uh, in a sprint? You want to be able, you want to define what you're going to do. Um, so what are you, what is the sprint for? Um, choose a topic or maybe a few multiple topics, uh, depending on the number of people you have. Um, um, yeah, so the, the the first sprint we had in Cambridge, there was a few disparate topics, but it was quite focused still. Uh, it w there were, um, we decided to work on um, in-band registration, so for easier onboarding, or um, there were also a few, a few people working on, on bookmark conversion, so from, uh, bookmark has been a fun story. Uh, <laughs> in the XMPV community. So we decided to fix a few things, a few use useful things, I think. 
Um, and then for whom uh, our sprint in general are, are really contributor focused. So we invite anybody who would like to contribute to the ecosystem in general. Uh, so, well, mostly, mostly developers, but also translators or people willing to work on documentation or, um, or UX uh, in general uh, user experience and also give us feedback uh, on the implementations. Um, yeah, so you're going to have to decide dates. Uh, we generally start thinking, so people, I, I know, uh, people give the idea that they might want to do a sprint at some point somewhere and then uh, what usually happens is that uh, it pushes them a bit to start organizing uh, and they we make a poll um, ask around for any interested people um, and so we decide dates are usually one two months before not too long before and not too close to the date itself, so people can organize themselves for transportation and accommodation. Um, it's usually organized during a weekend because, um, well, people might have to take holidays to get to the place. And yeah, they might prefer not to do that in the middle of the week. Um, and yeah, putting these events closer to bigger events like FOSDEM, uh, like we had one uh, on Wednesday, uh, I say Wednesday because Thursday and Friday were the XMPP summit, so it was all packed together. Might attract more people, so they just have to take all this for that that event, the big event. Uh, the venue, I feel the venue is the the hardest uh, thing to get. Uh, well depending on uh, from my uh, from my case, it was actually quite easily uh, easy. I just had to ask. Uh, Collabora sponsored uh, the, the venue for the first event in Cambridge, uh, in the UK. Um, so we had the, I could use the office. Um, they also sponsored uh, food. Um, but for others who don't have this opportunity, um, you could ask for any association around you. Uh, I know the last, the last print in Brussels was in some association I don't know the name of. Um, and uh, the one before in Dusseldorf was in uh, Chaosdorf, uh, one of the uh, CCC local branch, um, so hackerspaces. Um, or you could even do it at someone's place or Airbnbs uh, or, uh, or I don't know, squats or <laughs> whatever you can find this place. Uh, it doesn't have to be, I mean, it can just be a place to hang around. It doesn't have to be uh, official or anything. It's, um, but yeah, uh, I can help. I can ask people if ever you have an interest in organizing one. Uh, and we can help you find sponsors or anything. Um, accommodation, transportation is... Uh, this, is this might be the, the hardest bit for people coming to your event. Uh, it's going to be the, the more costly. Um, not everybody can come, and that's fine. Uh, you don't don't force people to come to your event if they, if it's a bit too far. Uh, often it will it might even be more expensive for people closer to you to come than people at the other end of the world because Ryanair or. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so it, it's fine if not everybody can come. Uh, few possible solutions for that is organizing more sprints in different places. So yeah, uh, around the same theme maybe or not, uh, depending on the interests. Or I wrote video conferencing of for the first sprint in Cambridge. Uh, JC uh, from Converse.js wanted to come, but he couldn't. And at the last minute, we decided to uh, have something uh, video conference. So it was there, uh, and we would uh, communicate uh, through that whenever we had questions or stuff like that. He also did a nice presentation on, on the client implementation and some details. Uh, but yeah, it's not the same experience for the remote participants, but it might be useful sometimes. Um, and the activities, what we actually do, 
Um, not everybody knows the whole community, so introductions are useful. Um, then we have some kind of uh, collaborative pad, so we use the uh, Etherpad or whatever you fancy to document what's happening in the event or what, even before the event, um, what people want to talk about, um, where, when, um, and any useful detail. Um, what, um, if you have any recommendation as the organizer, if you have any recommendation for accommodations they could, they could use or um, um, and anything you can think of before. Uh, mostly agenda uh, and what you're planning to, to do after, uh, uh, during the event. Uh, so then yeah, defining the agenda, we do that generally on the first morning. When we arrive at the place, um, we spend um, an hour, or uh, about an hour, uh, talking about what we're here for and, and really defining what we're going to do and who is interested in what topic. So we lay out the topics and we count the number of people interested and we form maybe small groups or maybe not. Maybe there are topics that are worth taking time at the, at the beginning altogether. Um, the agenda, it's also useful, it might be useful if um, not everybody knows what is going to happen in the sprint, the sprint to define the agenda beforehand. So they can come and having researched a bit and not lose time during the sprint. Uh, then we have the, the fun part, the hacking and discussions. Uh, so that's a big chunk of the, the weekend mostly. Um, and yeah, uh, food and drinks, it's usually done on the spot. It's not a regular hours. <laughs> uh, we will go whenever we're hungry or a small group will get, uh, will go to a supermarket to bring back uh, stuff. And <laughs> often it happens on the place, we eat on the place, or at night we decide to go out and, and go for dinner in a restaurant somewhere. Um, yeah, and the last point is, uh, uh, that's one of the most important things I, I, I think. Um, do a retrospective on what you've worked on, how it went, and uh, what's left, what's the progress. Um, <coughs> it helps you uh, to know where you are. It helps the others b that might not have been working with you. And it helps uh, the community in general to know what happened and uh, how they can help you, maybe. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, then writing about it is also a pretty important point. Um, once you have all the data you've put in that pad, uh, you can write about it. Uh, it helps, it will help promote the event and the technology in general, uh, or promote your project maybe, or some projects. Um, thanks to the sponsors, if you had any, or, and, uh, yeah, and encourage future events and, and encourage people organizing more events of this type. Um, and I think that's about it. That's some links uh, for what we've done. And uh, so there's the first one was at uh, GPN in Karlsruhe. It wasn't technically at that spot. It wasn't really called a sprint yet, but it was the idea. And then the one in Cambridge and the one in Dusseldorf. And there's probably more blog articles coming. The one in Brussels just was this week, so uh, I guess we'll do that soon. And that's about it. Any questions? Thanks for your talk. Uh, what, what do you think is a good frequency for a sprint like this? How, how often, how, how far are they apart? And was it like too, too, too soon or too, uh, too, too, too long? It will depend. Um, for the moment, I will, for the moment, I don't think doing them too often is a good idea because we don't yet have the resources to do them too often. We, we might be missing people or, yeah. Um, 
I would like, ideally I would like to have one sprint every six months close to you. Mm. Uh, maybe more if we manage to do that, but that'd be a good goal, I think, already. All right. Are there bridges made with other protocols in order to embed uh, uh, by default uh, the uh, XMPP protocol in some products or so on to sponsor, even if they are not ready development? Do, do, you, do you communicate a lot with other promoters of other protocols? Uh, not at the moment, but it could be an idea. Uh, yeah. yeah, sure.